Welcome back to Newcastle Central. This is part two of building the switch panel for the station itself. Uh, if you haven't seen part one and would like to see how we went about actually building up the first part of uh, this panel here, and getting all the holes done, getting toggle switches and LEDs in place, uh, then click the little card on the corner of the video now. That will take you to part one and then do come back and watch part two as well. Um, so when we finished uh, at the end of part one we had the panel ready and on the back we had all the toggle switches and LEDs in place. I've then gone ahead and put these little uh, small little connector blocks on the back so I, I think there's uh, 59 or 60 pieces in total, right around 60 I think. Um, and so my plan now is that I will trim all of these LED leads. These were pre-wired uh, with resistors LEDs. Um, so cut these into the connector blocks and then all of the uh, wires that run in from the points that will then indicate signals will connect into the connector blocks. I'm then going to solder up all of the actual wires that will run from the micro toggle switches and I have another bank of these uh, connector blocks underneath the actual layout itself. Um, so if we take a step back, this is where we are. We're looking in right at that main part of where the station would be. Um, so I'll have another bank of connector blocks underneath the layout here. Um, and the idea of that is to try and um, somewhat control the sprawl of cables. Um, you know, this isn't going to be a panel that you're really going to be able to lift off anywhere. So I didn't think it really mattered uh, whether everything connected on the back of the panel or everything connected underneath the layout. Um, so this way I should end up with about um, 60 wires that will run to the connector blocks on the back of here and then I'll have uh, for always about the same again that will run from the toggle switches to connect the blocks underneath the layout um, just to kind of spread out the load otherwise it will just be banks and banks and banks of connector blocks and I want to try and minimize how much time I have to spend underneath the layout so again at least this way um, the bulk of this would be able to screw in uh, to the back of the panel for all of the LEDs and then I can do that before I would actually set the panel in place and then the toggle switches that's when I have to actually get underneath the layout um, and actually start to screw all that in. Using the connector blocks again trying to minimize how much I have to do underneath the layout I don't want to try and do um, a whole bunch of soldering under that. I will have to do some probably for some of the point motors not everything is uh, soldered up for those so I'm going to go inside now and start to sit somewhere a little bit more comfortable um, to start to get all of these wires for the LEDs cut, stripped, and then attach those connector blocks. So we'll be right back with that. So this now is all of that back panel wired up for LEDs at least. So they are all now uh, trimmed and into those connector blocks. So next step is going to be soldering all the wires for the actual toggle switches themselves. So this is one for the LEDs where it worked on the workbench. I'll see what actually works in practice in terms of how am I going to be controlling these LEDs. So if you remember, let's try and flip it over. The toggle switches for these are center off. So try and pick this one. We flip it one way and then you have to return it to center. And if you want to come and turn it that way, flip it down and then return it to center. You have to do that return to center part because otherwise you're sending a continuous current through to the point motor. Now I'm going through a capacitor discharge unit again so I'm not too concerned about burning out the point motors but it doesn't mean that I drain the capacitor discharge unit. So you have to return to center when you're doing this. You can't send a continuous signal and just leave it. So if you were to flip then the LED isn't getting continuous power so what's my plan? So again on the workbench, and this is one that I had found um, in a couple of other places, um, what I've actually got, if I try and come into one of these LEDs, is I'll have one, so in this example this far yellow leg, I'd say that will run a common positive. This near black leg on the other LED, I'd say that runs a common negative. And in the two middle legs, uh, I'm going to take polarity off the frog on the point. So the idea is that I'll always have positive here, I'll always have negative on one leg, so at least one of the LEDs always has one of 
the polarity that it needs and then as the frog would switch polarity that then makes the circuit for either this top one if the frog goes one way and so this black this middle black one um, would then get frog polarity negative okay that completes circuit that LED lights up and then you flip the point the other way then this middle yellow ends up carrying uh, positive from the frog which goes with the common negative and this LED lights up that's my theory anyway uh, it did work like I say on the workbench um, the only concern that I have is that I don't really want to be driving these from DCC bus um, and you do some more research as to whether that's a smart thing to be doing or not um, other thing that I had seen is that there are some boards that you can get some small little boards um, that do something similar that basically are watching for um, a switch being thrown or are watching for a polarity change um, and they are basically designed to drive LEDs in this exact situation um, I don't really want to have to go and do that just because of the sheer numbers. So I'm at 23 switches for my points, um, plus then, you know, 50 some LEDs. But we'll see. So the next stage is now going to be all these different spools of wire that I've got across the top um, into those toggle switches. And the toggle switches, they're going to have two foot lengths of wire off each of them. And then I'll have more of these connector blocks under the layout. So we'll be right back. So we moved back out to the shed now because I've got the first half of this panel all wired up, all the toggle switches are done and then kind of banded together here. Uh, each of the ends of these bundles is labeled with which toggle switch it is, you know, 23, 20, the other one's kind of hanging out, uh, 21, it's kind of loosely grouped them together. And there is then a single red that runs through, uh, that'll run underneath, that's going to be uh, common power that comes from the capacitor discharge unit and then it's kind of desi chained all through the other ones um, that's just so that'll send that punch when you feel the toggle switch so I realized that I did an awful lot of wiring here and as much as I had done this uh, like I say on the workbench and with a couple of the switches as they're in place on the layout I wanted to now make sure that what I was doing here was actually going to work before I moved on and did the other half. So this was the first 10 switches. Um, this is actually going to be controlling the north side of the station. So I'm not going to get them all wired up. I'm just going to uh, wire and probably uh, one or two of these just to make sure that the theory that I've got going here is actually correct and that um, I'm not needing to make any changes because once I, you know, it, it's kind of fiddly to get all this solid in by the time you get all the common power that's running through it and then the ones that are coming off for the actual toggle switches and you got the LEDs, it's starting to get very, very busy here. So I want to make sure that if I have problems, I can correct this before I then mount the panel in place on the layout because uh, at that point there's just no way I'm really going to be able to do any kind of soldering under here and I don't want to have to then unscrew the dozens and dozens of cables that we're running into connector blocks. So. I'm going to start to wire up a couple of the switches uh, to the point motors and the capacitor discharge unit and make sure that's running okay um, before I move on and do the rest. So I'll be right back. One other thing that I just wanted to show quick here as I've been moving around and wiring up some of these other point motors is what you would experience on a junction like this. So really what I want is both of the motors to fire at the same time, like that. So if you look carefully, both of these motors actually fire at the same time. So they'll switch um, two point motors at once. And this is where kind of that uh, CDU really starts to have an advantage in that it can quite happily fire two. It can actually fire up to six technically. So that was on one switch. That's actually the switch, uh, the actually the toggle switch on the top left motor, number 22. And then toggle switch number 23 is then actually the bottom one. And so you get the exact same behavior there. So you may be wondering, okay, why do I have two different toggle switches that are technically doing uh, the same thing here? So if we come over and look at what I have going on. So this is what we're talking about here. It's these two toggle switches here. And technically they are controlling uh, the same thing here. You can hear it in the background firing as I'm flipping the toggle switch. And so why am I having that? Well, Really, it's, am I looking at a northbound train, or am I going to be focusing on a southbound train? So I'm looking at a northbound train. To ignore the north, north means north side of the station. It's not giving a direction of the actual tracks. 
The top one is going to be north, this middle one is going to be southbound, this is actually a, a fret bypass line, probably fret but it could be a bypass line too. So top is north, this middle one is south. So if I have a trend that's moving out on the northbound line and I want to switch it over onto this line for whatever reason, let's say I want to then uh, ultimately bring it over into the tiny yard. And what I can do is all I have to do is focus on that and so it's already going that way. I don't have LEDs on, but it was already going that direction. And if I then want to say, okay, now I need it to just go straight through, I don't want to throw that switch. Okay, I can now point it that way. I don't really want to have to deal with this toggle switch because um, logically that doesn't make sense to me. If I'm working on the northbound line, I want to be able to throw the toggle switch here. And then the opposite occurs on the southbound line. I just want to be using this toggle switch to control. Am I going to flip over onto what's technically northbound, or am I going to come straight through on south? And so why am I a one to have a train on a southbound line come on the northbound? Well, actually, it's just, it's not really north and south. They just happen to be the lines out. But if, for example, let's say this, uh, this swallow black and white, was on our, is, it is on our southbound line. But let's say it was a DMU that I want to end up coming into platform 0 or 1 up here. So the only way that I can do that, and this is actually somewhat prototypical, I wouldn't actually come all this far out, is I would actually switch over onto that line, come around the outside, and then I could be able to come into those platforms. Um, or if I had, you know, a train, because we do have these long platforms two and three, uh, so platform two and platform three, because we have those long platforms, I might then want to have uh, a train that switches either way. So I'm going to keep wiring some up. We'll be back soon. Bye. So I've now got all the points hooked up. I think I on that last video I talked about this dual, dual, dual point action. So where we could have you know, two different points that move at the same time. Um, I showed the one that was just over at the north end of the station uh, over here last time. I do have another one now right here as well. Uh, we can fire off as well. Let me fire it in the right direction. And uh, I didn't really actually talk about how to do that. This one's kind of interesting. Um, and it, it's, it's just basic electronics. This is a point, uh, Seeps PM1. Point motor, that's what the bulk of the stuff um, that I'm using on the layout is. And then I've also then got this um, surface mounted one, that's a Pico PL11. Uh, there were a few places where I had to put surface mounted ones just because of the positions of the supports on the baseboards. Um, so I have another two over here. They're actually not too bad um, when you get down all the way at track level. Um, they actually end up setting quite a ways down, so I'm actually quite happy uh, you know, with how they look. You don't actually protrude all that much. Anyway, let's move over um, to the actual panel itself. And again, just to help refresh people's memory, this is what we're talking about, where all I'm doing is flipping one toggle switch, like that, and it's actually firing both of those points. So, so I think on the previous video, I didn't show how I actually do it. But never mind, this is a good opportunity to go over it again, because I'm actually doing it twice now, if I can just move all this out of the way. So this is the connector block, and connector blocks is actually another one right here. Um, so these um, multicolored ones, this is uh, basically Cat5 Ethernet cable, so it's eight, eight strand cable, um, just so that I can easily get a whole bunch of cables back from the point motors. And then the black and green ones along the bottom here, these are the ones that are running up to those toggle switches. So if we take, um, you know, one of our regular points like this one, so we've got, you know, one point on the motor, another point on the motor, so, you know, A and B, I can't remember what they're labeled, um, on the seeps, but it's the two outside ones on the seeps motors. And on those Pico PL11s, it's the black and the red cable, so those flush mount ones, they only have three cables coming off, so it's black and red, and then they have green, the green is actually for the common that goes back to the capacitor discharge unit. So, for pretty much all of the point motors, regardless whether it's the SEEP or it's the PICO, will have those two cables that come off um, the motor itself. And that corresponds then with two cables, the black and the green, that then run to the back of the toggle switch. And then we had, just trying to move this out of the way. And then we had the red, 
common that was going to the center of all the toggle switches that was the positive from the capacitor discharge unit so this is a, a standard uh, model where it's just you know one that comes in and then one toggle switch these two here on the end this is where we've got those dual points that are firing at the same time so again we've still got them coming in from the point motors all we're doing is doubling them up so we have uh, you know two point motors and the other two from the point motors same here this is the one on the very very far end of the station um, basically as you would come over the high level bridge this one here that's the one that we've just been looking at a minute or two ago so all we're doing is we're bringing two point motors in together and then on the bottom you'll see that we're also then bringing in two toggle switches together um, these are kind of crossed as well depending on um, how you look at the color of them um, that's just um, to make sure that they're firing in the right direction there's a little bit of a difference in how those peak or PL11s this is the PL11s versus how a pair of seeps fire so this was two seep PM1s this was a seep PM1 and then the peak or PL11 so it just depends on you know how those two go and so what we're doing is just saying okay I'm running both toggle switches in and I'm also running both motors in and so that's why they may be um, flipped over so as you would flip one toggle switch one way it'll fire both motors correctly and then flip it the other way it'll fire the the inverse so that is all of um, that connected in we've then got all of this that runs up into the panel so now we've got this entire north side of the station all wired in all of the north side of the actual layout is all wired in all the electrics are in place anything that we don't have is um, on these ones I need to get frog juices because they can't switch polarity but that's pretty much it so I'm gonna call it an end here um, keep moving wiring up the rest of it please do subscribe go back and watch the first video uh, if you want to catch up and we'll be back with part three really soon thanks for watching